Is your keyboard disgusting, dirty, or just downright dingy? Well, follow this tutorial and maybe, just maybe, we can help save that poor innocent keyboard. All right, so as I'm sure you guys noticed in my Logitech G413 video, the G413 is in need of a cleaning coming up very soon. But what's worse, as I'm sure you saw from those screenshots, is my wife's K70 that I passed on to her. When I had it, I took very good care of it, but she uh, claims that she doesn't know how to clean a keyboard. So here we are. I'm making this video for her so she can watch it. That's that's definitely why I'm making this video. Um, as you can see, I already have all the keycaps off. We had a focus problem. We're back. We're actually in focus. So we're just gonna continue from here because I'm not gonna look up a picture and put these all back on. But a couple of points that I touched on in that other video that isn't gonna be aired anywhere now is one, when taking off your keys, any of the bigger keys, this keyboard doesn't have it. This is the K70. This keyboard doesn't have it, but you'll get like these, uh, they're like little metal stabilizers inside of the key. Uh, bigger keys, not the littler ones, but so like the space bar will have a metal stabilizer and it's actually clipped into plastic tabs on the keyboard. Make sure you very carefully remove those and then you put them back when you're done because it does help the keyboard function the way it's supposed to. Um, I have seen them where they've gotten ripped off and uh, okay, uh, let's not talk about that. But anyways, the second thing is make sure you either A, take a picture of your keyboard before or B, can look up a picture of your keyboard because yeah, the K70 is a very popular keyboard. I'm gonna be able to find a picture of this very easily, but some more abstract keyboards you might not be able to. So just make sure you have a picture of what your keyboard should look like. All right, so in this corner, we have my disgusting K70 Lux. It's not really that disgusting, honestly. I mean, I've seen it worse. Uh, there is our dog Cooper's fur on it, apparently though. Um, in this corner, we have key puller. These come with most mechanical keyboards nowadays. Honestly, just key pit. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, this is for when things get boring. No, I'm just kidding. Don't inhale this stuff. It has bitterance in it. You guys, it's not good stuff, okay? Uh, just canned air. Uh, we usually have some around the house. We actually had to go run out to buy some just for this video. So you guys should appreciate that. The last thing, well, the last item that we have is Q-tips, I use them for getting in between the keys. And then a bowl of soapy water. It's just hot water and dish soap. So what you do is you're going to just, no, I'm just kidding. Whoo, that would be, imagine if I dropped that and it like dumped all the keyboard. I would still put this video up. I would definitely still put this video up. Um, but anyways, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna switch to an overhead view and we're gonna put these in the water and I'm gonna show you guys kind of what I do. Yeah, but first actually, let's just do this first. So just to blow off any loose dust, and actually the tear off tab is still. There we go. Don't eat that. For any of you that have never used canned air, I'm sorry, I will turn down the volume right now. But a couple things to remember are, try to keep your room ventilated. This stuff will get you high, okay? And it tastes like crap. I already tasted it, I already spayed it a little bit. Um, but what you're really trying to do is just Whew. okay don't want to spray too much more of that uh just getting all that loose gunk and debris off there uh, we will we will do a little more cleaning with the Q-tips and some soapy water in a little bit. Um, but first off, I want to do this so that they start to soak. We're going to switch to the overhead cam, and then we will kind of do the rest of the cleaning. So, overhead cam. All right, guys. Now we're sitting here. Hello. Hello. Oh, you can't really see me. Um, but anyways, so as you can see, the keyboard, we've mostly cleaned it off. Uh, there's a ton of bittering in the room. Kind of burning the back of my throat. Uh, so next step we're gonna do is actually just take this bowl of water. And what you're gonna do is, again, make sure it's not boiling hot. Believe me, you wouldn't believe what I've seen, okay? Just 
Don't do it. But yes, you're going to take this, try not to splash water all over like I apparently am. I'm definitely splashing water everywhere, but whatever. Alright, so throw these all in that bowl. Kind of. Should probably move this away from that keyboard. <laughs> just kind of, woo, yay. Give them a nice little bath. Just kind of agitate the water a little bit. Alright, wipe that off. Alright, so there we go. We got our bowl of keys right there. You guys can see my audio equipment. Just ignore that. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these Q-tips. And I'm actually going to just sit here and do all of the lines. So this will all be sped up, obviously. But that's what I'm doing now. Oh, and you can also use a microfiber towel, obviously, to get the majority of it off. But any spots, like, that you have stuck on, obviously, use a wet Q-tip. Yay! Q-tip of the day. <laughs> Just don't get the Q-tip sopping wet, because obviously then you're going to have the problem of dripping water ever on your keyboard, which we don't want to turn this into how to fix a waterlogged keyboard video. Let's not do that, please. Pretty please, I'm begging. All right, and that is it. Bonus points if you guys can get your keyboard to look like a brand new keyboard, which actually this does now, which is kind of cool to think that it looked really dingy and like really old, and now it just looks like really, really good. So definitely going to um, get some points with the wife for that, or she'll just say that I should have cleaned it in the first place. So probably the second one. <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, Make sure that you dry it off really well on everything. Everything's really clean. Everything's really nice looking. Next step is these keys. They've been sitting here for a while. Kind of agitate them again. Uh, not going to hurt to agitate them more. Just going to get all that gunk off them. Next, you're going to want to actually, a, a step that I forgot to tell you guys about and a item that you're going to need. You actually want to take a strainer, just like a, like a pasta str a strainer, and actually take this over the kitchen sink, bathroom sink, bathtub, whatever. Uh, even outside, I don't care. And just strain out the water, and then you're actually going to rinse these really well. And then we're going to let them dry for... Uh, I would let them dry for definitely at least a couple hours. Uh, obviously, check them. I let mine dry for 24 hours. I've got spare keyboards. But obviously, if it's a little bit drier out, they might dry quicker. I can't really tell you, but yeah, just lay them on a towel. Make sure they are all the way dry before you put them back on. Do not ruin your keyboard, please. All right, next uh, next time you see me, we'll be ready to put the keys back on. So let's do it. All right, guys, and we're back. We are sitting in front of the keyboard. Uh, given the keys, it's actually been a couple days. I actually had some stuff come up I had to do. Haven't had time to put the keyboard back together. Uh, so here we are. Uh, so now I'm going to put this back together. I'm just going to kind of speed this up throw it back together and then I'm going to show you guys what the keyboard looks like after cleaning it. So let's do this. Oh, and one tip I'm going to give you. Personally, I like to start from one side of the keyboard and work my way across or at the top or whatever. It just makes it easier so you don't end up like one square or one like uh, stem over from where you're supposed to be. Then you have to take everything off and restart. Yeah. So just it makes it a lot easier. So just my recommendation. No, you know, just take it for what it's worth.
And that is it, guys. Uh, I, I've already got some like finger oil smudges off of my hands onto the keyboard while I was trying to reassemble it. Uh, it looks amazing. It looks like a thousand times better than it did. Amber already saw it when before the keys went on. She said it looked amazing. She was super happy to have it clean. Hopefully she'll keep it clean. Uh, but let's go back to the desk really quick. And so I guess that's about it, guys. As you can see, the keyboard looks a thousand times better. It's so nice and clean. It really does look like a keyboard that isn't a year and a half old now. It looks like a keyboard that is pretty much new. As I was putting this back together and playing with the keys and stuff, I do remember how much I miss having this K70. I might pick up a K95. Um, I know that I was ragging on it in the G413 video, but Corsair just makes really, really nice keyboards. That's not, this, this isn't a review for the Corsair, but I'm just saying, look for that in the future. Um, if you guys appreciated the tutorial, leave it a like. If you didn't like it, leave it a dislike. Let me know what I did wrong. Let me know why you didn't like it down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. Tell your friends, family, and crazy neighbors about the channel. Helps me out. Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon down in the description. If you like the content we make and you want us to continue making more and better content, become a patron. Even at the dollar entry level, it it still helps us out. Every dollar goes towards reviews, gear for the channel, and just stuff of that nature. So consider becoming a patron. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.